Alex Taylor and Jonathan Jarethy, both of Osborne Park High School, to make the introductions of our final panel. Gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the 235 session on the war in Iraq, the way forward. The issue foremost on Americans' minds today is certainly the war in Iraq. As we move forward in this war, we should always remember and listen to the veterans who have returned home from the battlefield. Pete Hexeth served in Baghdad during October and December of 2000, 2005. Mr. Hexeth has been awarded the Bronze Heart for his mer meritorious service in Iraq. Today, Mr. Hexeth has devoted his, devoted his times towards helping men in Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, students and faculty, I am pleased to introduce one of our next guests, David Bellavia. David Bellavia is a former Army Staff Sergeant who served in the 1st Infantry Division. He has been recommended for the Medal of Honor for actions he took in a fierce urban firefight in the Battle of Fallujah. He has received the Silver Star, the Bronze Star, and the Conspicuous Service Cross. He has also been nominated for the Distinguished Service Cross. He and his platoon were the subjects of a Time Magazine cover story, Into the Hot Zone. David is the Vice Chairman for the Vets for Freedom Action Fund. David returned to Iraq in June 2006 as an embedded reporter with the Iraqi Army. And, and now, please join me in a round of applause for Staff Sergeant David Bellavia. Students, faculty, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor today to be able to introduce to you an American hero. Sergeant Marco Martinez joined the United States Marine Corps in 2001. While on patrol with this fire team in Iraq, they received a request to support the 1st Platoon of Company G. Sergeant Martinez and his team gave the 1st Platoon its cover, but his squad leader was wounded. Sergeant Martinez assumed leadership of his squad and led them into several buildings, clearing them of the enemy. In one of the courtyards, a fellow Marine was shot and paralyzed. Sergeant, Sergeant Martinez took an enemy rocket launcher and shot a rocket into a nearby bunker, stunning the terrorists. While the terrorists were unable to fight, Sergeant Martinez rushed to the aid of the Marine and killed the remaining terrorists. For his valiant efforts, Sergeant Martinez received the second highest award of valor for action against an enemy force, the Navy Cross. He returned to civilian life in 2004 and wrote his memoir, Hardcore. He now works full time while studying for his business degree. Our guest is a true hero and a patriot of our country. He has fought to preserve the freedom we all enjoy today. It is my sincere honor to introduce to you Sergeant Marco Martinez. Is this all right? Well, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be sitting at this table with these two gentlemen that, uh, with exceptional biographies and and uh, or, you know we share uh, a sense of patriotism, a love of country, and and uh, an appreciation for the guys that we went over there with. But what I don't share with with these guys is a best-selling book from these. <laughs> And I don't have a propensity for single-handedly assaulting buildings either, which both of them do. If you read, if you read their citations, they both, uh, you know, entered a building by themselves, knowing that four or five or more insurgents were inside, knowing that doing so they may save the lives of other members of their unit. And and those are the kinds of stories that need to be told and should be told. So I, I mean, it's really an honor to be up here with these guys. Uh, you know, these are the heroes. These are the next generation of leaders in our country. And uh, it's, just, it's just an appreciation. It's just a great, great honor to be up here with them. Uh, you know, Iraq the way forward is a huge subject uh, and, and something that's going to be tough to cover in, in 30 minutes. So I'm going to keep it brief. I'm going to hand it over to these guys for a minute or so, and then we're going to take questions from the audience. But, uh, you know, obviously what, the way we see the way forward is in many ways colored by our, own ex by our experiences in Iraq, by what we saw when we were there. Marco was there in 03, David, you know, in 04 and 05, and I was there in 2005 and 2006. We were in different parts of the country, Anbar province, Baghdad, Samara, Saladin province, and saw, you know, a lot, fought different enemies, but it was ultimately the same fight. Uh, 
at the same time, you know, as we talk about moving forward, we all recognize and saw the mistakes that happened. I think, you know, we'd be naive to, to stand up in here and say, you know, the way forward is going to be rosy, and it means the past was rosy. You know, you can talk, go up and down the line about WMD or troops or, or uh, you know, Rumsfeld or planning or corner insurgency or dissolving the Iraqi army. We could talk about that for days, but I think what our country needs at this point is a conversation about the way forward and, and a recognition that we are where we are, and mistakes have been made as they've been made in every single war. And we need to, we need to have an, an honest and mature discussion about the situation as it is now and what it should and can look like going forward. Uh, and that's what we hope to do and discuss today. Um, you know, a couple, a couple bullet points that I want to talk about about the way forward and where we are. You know, the reality now is that Al-Qaeda is there. Whether they were there in 2003 or 2004 is a moot point. At this point, they've made Iraq their central front. Global jihadists from around the world have now looked to Iraq as their chessboard, as their battlefield. And what we do there is going to have incredible ramifications uh, for our strategic interest in the region and, frankly, our own safety as a country. Uh, I would also say that, and, and uh, these gentlemen would probably agree with me and most folks in uniform, that the strategy we're pursuing now, a counterinsurgency strategy implemented by General David Petraeus, is finally the right strategy to be using in that country. We are finally protecting the population at the neighborhood level. We did a lot of great things. We cleared cities. We stood up Iraqi armies. We, we held national elections. And all of those things are incredible and to be applauded. But all the while, security continued to go down. The security situation continued to get worse. And what General Petraeus understands and what is the baseline of any counterinsurgency is you have to protect the population. You have to bring the violence down. If you don't bring the violence down, you're never going to have the political reconciliation that you ultimately need. And you're certainly never, uh, if you're training an Iraqi army and then you're sending them out into Fallujah to get their butt kicked, then when are they ever going to have a viable uh, military uh, force? So you need to create an environment in which you're giving these uh, Iraqi security forces an opportunity to be uh, the top dog on the street and really provide security. Uh, and then I think the, the last point I want to make is that with that strategy has come success, uh, at least on the security and military level. Uh, you're seeing, you know, with more troops and an offensive posture, we've had less casualties, uh, which is, you would think would be counter, it's, it's counterintuitive. You'd think if we've got more guys out in the city and they're in an offensive posture, you're going to have more casualties. Well, we, had, we lost 120 soldiers and Marines in, in May, which is the month before all the surge forces were in Baghdad. In the month of October, we lost 23. It's a drastic, over 75, 80% drop. And it's, it's been a continual trend. And as you look at Iraqi deaths down 56%, uh, coalition, you know, IEDs down 80%. And why is that? It's because we're, we're finding them. And the Iraqi, Iraqi people are telling us where they are, and we're not hitting them because their trust is turning. Tips are up over 400%. And, a, and tips, meaning you know, when they call us and they let us know where the enemy is or where, where IEDs are, that's a huge indicator. It's a much better indicator than uh, deaths of whether or not the population believes you're providing security. And, uh, and the Iraqi security forces are improving. And I, I, you know, I, a lot of that uh, is you know, obviously fundamental to our ability to get out and leave behind a stable situation. So I think the narrative of 2007 is, and the way forward is we've stopped the civil war that was clearly there. There was ethnic cleansing, there was violence, there was Sunni killing Shia, Shia, Shia killing Sunni, and at this point, we've stopped off the, we've cut off the accelerants from Al-Qaeda and from some of the Shia militias, and the violence is coming down, and it's going to give us an opportunity to, to, to secure that country. Uh, it's still an open question, no doubt, but uh, I think the way forward includes, an, uh, needs to include an honest debate about the fact that we do have a new strategy, and let's talk off, you know, honestly about what it's producing. So that's my two cents on the way forward. I'll, I'll hand it over to Marco and David, and then we'll certainly uh, take questions.